<coughs> Hi, I'm Rad Linux, and today we're going to do a side by side comparison of the Flipper Companion apps. On the left, I have the mobile app. I'm running that on Android. And on the right, I have the QFlipper desktop app, and I'm running that on Linux through the app image. Now, uh, these are very similar apps, very similar capabilities, uh, but there are some key differences. And so I figured I'd go over those with you. Uh, the first one is off the break. Visually, these are very different apps. Uh, you know, the QFlipper app, I love the way that this app looks and feels. Uh, they took a lot of care to bring some of that uh, retro futuristic uh, hacking aesthetic to it. Uh, the, the simple things, the borders, the color scheme, uh, really nice and very, uh, you know, definitely brings that, that continuity. I love the, the horizontal orientation as well. Uh, I think that, you know, it feels like you're using the Flipper Zero. It feels like an extension of the Flipper Zero. And I, I just love the way that it looks. Uh, I can't say the same about the mobile app. The mobile app is definitely that kind of uh, more flat, modern mobile app aesthetic. Uh, it lacks some of the, even just the simple kind of continuity stuff, like these little borders and, and things. Uh, and, and though they try to bring some of like the fonts over, uh, like these update fonts, uh, they, they don't bring the complete fonts set over and you know, this just looks uh, a little bit boring. Uh, it is also vertically oriented. Uh, and I do think that, that kind of breaks the flow a little bit. It doesn't really give you that same like feeling like you're inside the app uh, controlling it or, or using it as an extension. Uh, but visuals aside, uh, you know, both of these apps are capable of updating your firmware. This is probably the most important reason to use these apps. Uh, and both of them can do it. Uh, the Flipper mobile app added support for that, I think somewhere in the summer. Uh, so that's uh, newer, uh, but you've been able to update, you know, the, the firmware with the QFlipper app uh, since its inception. Both devices, uh, or both applications rather, uh, have a couple other kind of quirky fun features, uh, and that would be remote control uh, and file management. So uh, file management is easy to access here and uh, remote control is easy to access here. Uh, and on uh, on the mobile app, they, those are going to be under options and experimental options. And uh, we'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, now, in terms of file management, uh, you know, frankly, the, the best use case for the for any of these apps is to interact with the internal storage. I don't know of another way aside from possibly mounting this. I don't, I don't know how to view this as an external storage device on my PC in, in order to interact uh, with things like changing your Dolphin state or making some of the, uh, the adjustments to some of these settings files. Uh, you have to do that through the app uh, by copying it off, changing it and sending it back. If we're doing much work with the SD card, you're probably going to want to address this a little bit differently. Uh, the best way to interact with your SD card is to eject it, use it in a uh, card reader with your PC. Uh, the file management here lacks a lot of the, the basic fundamentals that we expect from a file manager. Uh, there is no drag and drop. Uh, you can drag files from your PC onto here and it will transfer those files, uh, but you can't change where files are in between things like subfolders. It's very limited in, in what it can do and it lacks a lot of the creature comforts. It's also very slow. Uh, so if you're trying to, it has a hard time taking large amounts of files and transferring it, uh, you know, to, on, onto the micro SD card. Uh, and it's just not a, a great use case. I recommend pulling the card out using a card reader. Both of these also offer some remote control options, uh, and that's fun and functional. You can get into the you know the UI and basically interact with it uh, as as though you were you know had your hands on the device. I'm not going to show you this one. I'm going to hold off for one second because I want to use it to illustrate a different point. Uh, and that is that 
the biggest difference between these two apps is the connection mechanism. So on the mobile app, we're going to use Bluetooth. I've tried using USB. I don't believe that it works. Uh, and on the desktop app, we're using USB. And again, I don't believe we can connect through Bluetooth. There, is, there are huge differences between Bluetooth and USB, and that's primarily bandwidth and latency. So uh, one of the things you will notice is if you're trying to transfer like large files and file management, uh, doing that over Bluetooth is going to be tedious uh, because the, the uh, bandwidth just isn't there. It's going to take a minute. Uh, and that's probably why it's under the experimental section. Uh, but what is not in a, under an experimental section but still suffers from the same issue is updates. So the way that it works is that the uh, applications have to essentially push the new firmware to the device and then the device takes over and does like a self-installation process. But, uh, you know, if you're sitting down the QFlipper desktop app, uh, maybe it'll take about a minute to transfer those files over to the Flipper and then the Flipper will take over. It'll be about three to five minutes. Now with Bluetooth, I have had experiences where it has taken up to maybe like 20 minutes or so uh, just to send the files to the device and then the device has to, has, to, has to take over and then do its own work with it. So frankly, it's just not a great experience to update your firmware through the mobile app. It, it's really just not. Uh, so I don't, I really prefer to use the, the Qflipper app. What was a five minute thing takes 30 minutes. That's insanity. Uh, also, I mean, the, the consistency of the Bluetooth connection here is not great. I, I oftentimes have to like forget the flipper or uh, conversely go on to the device and like, you know, remove all the pairings uh, to get it to connect properly after playing around with stuff like uh, connecting to, to multiple, you know, computers or using it as like a Bluetooth remote and stuff. It's, it's just not, it's just not there uh, in my mind. Uh, but the other issue that comes up is latency. Bluetooth notoriously has some latency issues. And so if we go over here, we can see uh, that, you know, this is damn near uh, real time. But over here, where there's the latency is, is not just a singular direction, it's sending it out. And then we also have to receive the the information coming back to us so there is a huge delay uh, and you can actually see that i've pressed a button and then this one recognizes it before this one recognizes it uh so it, it the the remote uh screen streaming option is, is not great here what the mobile app can do uh, in terms of remote control uh, is we can actually send some some types of signals directly from our mobile app uh, I can go right over here and we can uh, send a sub gigahertz signal. Let's see this. Directly from the phone without having to, to even interact with it the same way you interact. It's not like, you know, moving through the device. It's just sending this. The only issue with that is that uh, the flipper does not expect you to have things uh, categorized in subfolders. Uh, it, ostensibly, this can only read uh, files that are in like the root of the 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 folder, the, the, you know, the concurrent folder. So uh, anything that's in the sub gigahertz folder, the root of the sub gigahertz folder, or the root of the NFC folder, root of infrared will be picked up. But if you have your things organized in subfolders. Uh, it's not gonna work uh, and you're not gonna be able to find them all, right? Like you can only see seven of these different signals. These are all just signals I haven't categorized or haven't organized yet. Um, and uh, so that, that kind of doesn't work out great. Uh, you can't interact with everything unless you wanna have a complete mess on your hands for actually interacting with it on the device itself. Uh, so that's not, the, the best, but it is a cool concept. Uh, the thing that I am actually most intrigued by is this hub over here. This is a relatively newer feature. Uh, if you've been playing around, you might have noticed that uh, in the NFC section, there's a newer option called Detect Reader. 
Uh, now, I believe what you're supposed to do with this is kind of uh, bump it up against uh, an NFC chip reader uh, to figure out maybe what type of signal it wants to work with or what type of implementation it wants to work with. I think uh, I'm not 100% positive. I think it will basically tell you what like what kind of thing this is. I don't know. But uh, what I do know is what it does is it uh, takes that information. Uh, and then we have to go over here to our NFC tools. Uh, and what it will do is it'll take the information we've acquired using our flipper uh, and it will leverage the power of our phone uh, to be able to do some calculation stuff that the flipper wouldn't do very well. And I think this is probably the coolest, I guess, uh, direction that the flipper is going or for the flipper mobile app is going because, you know, uh, again, you know, the, the experimental feature is not great. Uh, the actual firmware updating, not great, uh, but the idea of being able to leverage my uh, the power of my phone's calculation abilities uh, to Im interact with some of the information we acquire through the Flipper is super interesting through like, maybe a, this plug-in-like system. Uh, so I'm I'm really excited to see where that goes and to see uh, how how that 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 works in the future. Uh, just a, a heads up, if you are using the Linux version of this, or really if you're interacting with your Flipper using uh, a Linux PC, you do have to change some UDEV rules. You can do it manually if you know what you're doing. Uh, though the app image does offer to do this for you. Uh, and the app image, uh, there are all, the QFlipper app is open source. You're welcome to go in and check the, the script it's gonna do. I, I find it to be trustworthy. Um, but you know, do your own research if uh, you know you're concerned about that. Changing UDEV rules is a, a, bit, a bit of a security risk. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, overall, these are the two different apps. I love the Cupover app. Uh, I really love the way that it works, the way that it looks. Uh, doesn't have quite all the same features uh, as as are, are kind of popping up with the mobile app though. Uh, the mobile app, and I'm excited to see how that looks in the future. So. Um, you know, if you've hung out with me, I hope this is helpful. Uh, and thanks again. I'm Rod Lennox.